Hey there, this is Christine. Thanks so much for tuning into my mostly keto kitchen today. Today what I want to talk about are micronutrients and the one that I want to focus on in particular is vitamin K. So I recently did a little comparison. I wanted to look at lettuce versus beef and just see what the difference is in terms of the vitamins. And here's a graph showing what I found. So these are both 100 gram quantities and it ends up being about three cups of shredded green leaf lettuce versus a three and a half ounce patty of ground beef that's been broiled. And, uh, you know, and you can see that the vitamin A, vitamin C, and vitamin K levels are all quite high for the lettuce. And then where the beef ends up showing up having more of the vitamins is for vitamin E, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B6, vitamin B12, and pentothenate, which is your vitamin B5. Now, so there's some information here though that is missing, and that is that the two vitamins that leaf lettuce is doing so well in, vitamin A and vitamin K, those are actually not the form of the vitamin that we most need, okay? So today I'm gonna to focus on vitamin K. So it ends up that this requirement is for vitamin K1 only. So the recommended daily intake is for K1 only. I've drawn the structures up here of K1, which is called phyloquinone, and K2, which is in a family of menaquinones. And so why we've got plural here is because you can have more of these little, it's like a five carbon unit called an isoprene unit that can get added onto the end, either three of them, four of them, or five of them, so that you've got a wide variety of these tails that can exist on the menaquinones. Now you'll also notice that there's another little difference here. This guy only has one double bond in the tail, whereas here, every one of those five carbon units has a double bond in it. And what that ends up doing is making this tail really stiff, whereas this tail can be super floppy. It can rotate it. Every one of those carbons, it can rotate. And so biochemically, these two molecules are not interchangeable because that stiff tail is gonna serve a different function. It's gonna interact with enzymes in a different way. And so both of these guys are involved in blood coagulation. That's where the, the K comes from is because in German, this would be a K for coagulation. So both of them are involved in that. However, vitamin K2 is gonna be involved in a whole variety of other things. And we are just, I would say, on the cusp of understanding what all those other things are. However, it is pretty well established at this point that vitamin K2 plays an important role in cardiovascular health. And that is that it helps to protect against too much calcification in your arteries. What does calcification do? Well, it ends up being part of a blockage that would cause heart attack or stroke. So it's very important to get enough K2. Now, down here on the bottom, I've written some people can convert K1 to K2, right? There's an enzyme that can do that. It would put in these little double bonds here, but not all of us do that efficiently. And so this is one more reason why I really don't appreciate it when people say, oh, the vegan diet is the diet for everybody. No, it's not. Um, there are some of us that need to get this K2 and where it comes from is from animal products. I missed saying that part. Animal products is where you get the K2. K1, that's what's gonna be in vegetables. So unless you're a really good converter, which maybe some people are, like in the Game Changers movie, all those amazing athletes on plant-based diets, they are probably the folks that convert that really well. But then there's gonna be a lot of other people out there that that's not true for. And so again, I just don't want that to be blanket, hey, everybody needs to go the plant-based route. So where can, you, um, where can you get K2? Well, K2 is gonna be found in things that, ha um, that are animal products, in particular like aged cheeses. There's high levels of K2 in those. And then similarly, chicken, beef, you know, meats in general. And of course, my favorite, liver. So liverwurst, pate, you're gonna get a lot of vitamin K2 out of that also. So um, there is a research article that I used. It was a, a 2019 research uh, review that was pretty helpful. And so I will put a link to that in the notes here. And otherwise, uh, let me know if you have questions. Thanks for tuning in.